Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's FS Club webinar. I say good morning, uh, coming out of London, uh, but we, in fact, have quite a widespread uh, set of guests here. Sarah Jones is in Argentina, and William Quende is in Russia, in Moscow at the moment. So uh, taking full advantage of the ability of the web these days to produce webinars across the world. Now, our subject today is achieving sustainability in developing markets, and we're going to have a case study with Sirius Shia and Clio Organics. Uh, and Sarah and William are here uh, to represent that. You'll know me, I'm Michael Minelli. I'm one of the directors of Zien, and it really is a privilege to be able to introduce many of these webinars and participate in them. But I can only do so, we can only do so, thanks to the generosity and tolerance of our sponsors who allow us to range widely and freely across technology, economics, and finance. And today, we are going to range widely and freely across technology. There's a lot more technology in this than you might think, uh, and the economics and finance of achieving sustainability in developing markets. The agenda today is uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, my job is to get out of the way as quickly as possible so you can hear from our experts. Uh, they'll be speaking for uh, about 10 minutes each, and then we'll move over to hopefully uh, 15 minutes of uh, Q&A. Uh, a few quick pointers, if I may. Firstly, the slides are already up and available on the website, and we'll be up there afterwards. A recording will be going up in mm -hmm. approximately 48 hours. Uh, and uh, lastly, and most importantly, uh, for the Q&A, please do type your questions into the GoToWebinar question facility on your dashboard. Um, I won't be answering telegrams or signals or WhatsApps or emails or messages or text. I'm here with you uh, listening uh, to William and Sarah. So please do get your uh, questions in there and I will feed them in uh, to our discussion. And finally, all, all of the questions and comments that you send uh, will be given to William and Sarah with your email. So if you need to contact them, they just simply type a question or comment in. So with uh, no further ado, if I may, uh, the floor is very much yours. William, Sarah, over to you. Thank you, Michael, for the very welcome invitation and the nice introduction. We highly recommend Shea Butter as an outstanding deep moisturizer for men and women. Next slide, please. Uh, we are striving to achieve sustainability in developing markets. Uh, this is a case study of Seru Shea, uh, subsidiary of Cleo Organics uh, and Agritech Group that's working on, uh, on Shea Butter. Next slide, please. Uh, this is Nikki, uh, Clear Organic Brand Models, based in Nigeria. She's quite famous. Nikki is promoting Clear's new range of luxury, high-performance cosmetics for the face, skin, hair care, hair care uh, the rare scents, uh, enhancing the base oil blended with the shea butter, about 90% of uh, pure, deforestation-free, zero-carbon shea butter. Uh, it's outstanding red A shea butter. It has four times uh, the healing and repair fraction of any other natural oils or fat. The healing property generally get lost in processing um, as uh, heat uh, break down uh, some of the, the, the ingredients. Uh, some economic projection place Nikki's country, Nigeria, as the top of the 15 richest country economy by the year 2050. Uh, on December 18, 2017, the UN Secretary General uh, Amina Mohamed announced uh, Nigeria's sovereign green bond as the world's first fully certified sovereign green bonds price at, uh, uh, at the Nigerian Naira, uh, 10.69 billion, so approximately US 28 million as the first. Yet Lagos, Nigeria and Africa commercial hubs is surrounded by some of the the poorest uh, rural communities in the world, which does not have access to mainstream investment. Next slide, please. This is a story, future, past, present, of the rural communities across the semi-arid Sahel. Uh, so the Sahel is the area around the Sahara, from northern Nigeria to the east to Senegal in the west. Here's the she industry contributes for an income of over 16 million women and over 3 million in Burkina Faso alone. She fats. 
from the nuts of the almond of the tree, indigenous to the Sahel, are found in food and confectionery worldwide and in at least 1,950 cosmetic products. Quite impressive. Shefat is an important substitute for cocoa and basically is the reason why the chocolate does not melt in your hand but melts in your mouth because she has the same melting point than the human body temperature, unlike uh, cocoa, which has a, a, a much lower uh, melting point. Uh, so that's the reason why chocolate actually can reach your mouth and doesn't fall off your hands. Uh, by 2025, the global shea industry is predicted to be worth abs approximately US $2.9 billion, contributing to the healthcare industry, which may surpass $11 trillion, and the confectionery industry of approximately $11 billion. Next slide, please. And we have a poll coming up here. So, folks, uh, please. I'll just launch the poll now. This is a bit of a geography test for everyone, but I, I did tell William and Sarah that the FS Club membership was particularly strong on these. 50% um, of the audience have voted. Just give, give you all a few more seconds. I hope you all feel like you're in an early morning classroom. Great. Most of the audience have voted. I'm going to close the poll now uh, and share the results. I, I couldn't have predicted this myself. So we have a, almost an, an even three-way split between all of them. Do you wish to reveal, William? Yes. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's Wagadougou. So um, I think I will now have a, a spelling contest on the on the on the name of, of, of the capital. <laughs> yeah. in a fast well, uh, I'm slightly embarrassed on behalf of our community. That we, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, back to you two. I'll warn, I'll warn you about that one. Um, <laughs> the shoe fruits uh, contain the kernel, uh, <laughs> the tree, uh, similar to an uh, almond kernel. Uh, with the uh, shea nuts, uh, we, we call it uh, the shea almond, which is inside. The nuts are dried, they boiled, uh, dried, crushed, and pounded into a pulp, which has to be then boiled to separate the fat as raw shea butter. As much as the rural uh, Sahel has no alternative energy or power, uh, actually has no power, the processing of the shea collected uh, and converted into shea butter relies on firewood. Uh, and basically, we're using more than 10 kilograms of firewood to produce one kilogram of shea butter. Recently, we're very sad to see that the shea tree themselves are being used as firewood for the shea butter. So basically, cutting and burning the banks. In Burkina Faso, the shea industry has contributed 17.5% uh, to deforestation of natural parkland. So, you know, uh, it is not really a tree that we can grow. These trees produce after they are 50 years old and until they are 200 years old. So um, it's quite difficult to, to maintain uh, the shea parkland if there is an abusive uh, use of, uh, of firewood uh, from the trees, especially for shea butter itself. In addition, we have uh, serious problems with health. Uh, the women that are doing the shea has, are subjected to a lot of uh, cancer due to the, the use of uh, the smoke uh, from the firewood. Uh, so despite the arrangement as, as for fair trade certification, uh, community income uh, keeps falling and uh, the deterioration to the environment, uh, it's adding to the problems. Uh, uh, there's still no financing of the basic infrastructure. They're unable to do so. Uh, for healthcare, for schooling, um, and, and not even mention transition to a clean energy. Uh, this also uh, affect, uh, of course, water, because when we said uh, she needs to be boiled, there are some water issues and other communities' activities. They're not just a financial inclusion issue uh, for the Sahel communities, but for many other rural and low-income communities across across the globe. Next slide, please. Okay. 
Sorry, I'm having a... It's showing a new age of prosperity, William. All right. Uh, starting with the pilot project in Burkina Faso, the Serio Che and uh, Clear Organic project represent African voices in action so that rural communities uh, through the Sahara region and their value chain and supply chain worldwide benefit from a new age of, of uh, prosperity. Next slide, please. The next part of this webinar cover, co covers five sections, sustainability, uh, governance uh, of innovation, future business, long finance, and true value. Next slide, please. The Serio Shi and Clear Organic project uh, overall goals is the financial inclusion of communities with zero carbon deforestation free technology. Next slide, please. Here you see the Clean Processing Center. Uh, it's, it's the pilot uh, that designed to be established near Ouagadougou. Um, actually, uh, the, the research was funded by the African Development Bank and the World Bank uh, using some of the top firm in the world. The Clean Processing Center will be the heart of the eco community. They will be able to give uh, renewable energy, mechanical engineering, fair prices, Income is a share from share processing fee, mango processing fee, share butter sales, mango sales, compost sales, fuel sales, and carbon substitution. Next slide, please. Regional centers are serviced by up to 10 collection points. So basically, the collection points will collect the fruits, process the fruits, and provide uh, fruit pulps and, and, uh, and almond uh, to the, uh, the processing centers that will produce mostly shea butter. Next slide, please. The governance of innovation, motivation, um, and, and, frame of, and framework. So, next slide, please. The shea industry is the third largest in Burkina Faso as a contributor to the GDP. The National Union of Shea Producer of Burkina Faso has 5,000 cooperatives which were re recently restructured you know from association to cooperative uh using some contribution from the world bank and 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 some of the work that we've done clean energy processing center with street quality control we produce export grade a shea butter including for 72 percent share food currently sold as kernel uh, the potential documenting for carbon registration uh, of course, and the sale of up to two million five hundred thousand tons of of, of CR carbon uh, uh, tons of carbon. National government development banks were involved, and we will take take the advantage to thank uh, uh, our friend from the World Bank, from the African Development Bank, uh, from Long Finance, um, and from the Burkina Faso government. So we, we will have some uh, certified carbon substitution credit, which can help leverage uh, private finance. An international market, uh, in international market, many corporations have signed uh, a zero deforestation and zero carbon pledge, um, such as Unilever, General Mills, uh, Murphy, Global Food, Mark and Spencer, Mars, Mondelez, Walmart, but they still have very little products that they can acquire with that certification. A Burkina Origin Zero Carbon Zero Deforestation Free Certification will be issues with the production of shea butter from our processing center. Next slide, please. Agritech Holding uh, through Golden Organic Global uh, with the trading arm based in Dubai is a major shareholder of Serio Shea. Uh, Clear Organic uh, the, is, is the parent company which uh, owns the 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 ambassador brand uh, to be able to uh, have a better connection with people on the story of Shea. So Cleo basically tells the story of Shea, uh, the, the, the land, the parkland, the women, and, and, and much more. I'm William Quende, uh, chairman of Agritech as well. Uh, and I lead the charge and the interest with all partners interested in purchasing uh, Clear products, uh, shea butter, and especially investing into this 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 project. Next slide, please. Uh, business strategy: uh, uh, future, past, present, go, no go, financing stages, creating opportunity, managing risk. Next slide, please. 
On the top right hand corner is the governance structure which includes the foundation which has a golden share of the business to ensure that short and long term decision making is driven by the ESG agenda. Actually at all level of the business, uh, whether uh, in the production of the shea butter with Seru Shea and the production of, uh, of cosmetics, the women groups are represented and involved uh, as a board member and shareholders. The colored arrows are go no go stages for the specific Seru Shea and clear organic project. Working back from the goals, there are three financing stages for the Seru Shea and clear organic project. Phase three, uh, in estimated to be in 2030 uh, and beyond mainstream. Phase two, uh, 20, 2022 to 2030, a uh, year four to 10, we'll need about uh, 100 million US uh, of impact. And phase one, the pilots that we are now trying to put together, we're looking for about $2 million of, of, of capital. So about 1 million for uh, for, for infrastructure and another million for working capital. Um, uh, shea butter is very intensive in working capital because we have, it's a seasonal crop. So we do have over three, four months to harvest and, and store and, and pay the women groups, uh, for the whole year, for the entire. So this is the reason why uh, the, capi the, the working capital requirements are so high. The research and development is completed for the pilot. He has cost over $1 million as a national wide study funded by ourselves, uh, the African Development Bank and the World Bank. And it has been implemented by, uh, four of the, of the top firms in the world I into the various areas. So forestry, we have a full satellite mapping of all the shape forest logistics, uh, processing technology, uh, and, and, uh, and markets. Next slide, please. The R&D stage uh, this has been completed. Uh, uh, the women groups dialogue represent about 10,000 women. Uh, we have done the Quay organic product design as well as some sale point in, in France, in, in, in Northern Europe, in Sweden particularly. And now we, we are doing uh, uh, the Middle East and we are looking for partner in the US uh, and and we are now even having a, a, a specific uh, line for for Africa and, and Nigeria where you saw Nikki earlier. Um, Agritech and partner data scoping collection analysis um, and project projection scenarios. Clear organic shea butter uh, product design and the first market in the UAE as I mentioned. Uh, next slide, please. And passing on to Sarah. Thank you very much, William. Sarah. Long Finance. William Quandy is chair of Africa's Clean Food Processing Consortium. The Sirius She and Clear Organics project is a model to apply to the African continent for the rollout of clean technology and financial inclusion. We are working principally behind the scenes with the advice of fund managers, banks, and business strategists. What needs to be done now so that Africa can access mainstream finance, say in 10 years' time, significant in finance this decade. We invite you to listen to our analysis and solutions critically as we believe we can achieve this with further step action. The issues I'm present deserve at least a webinar each, so this is just a snapshot to pick out points for further clarification and discussion. Next slide, please. Okay, so the trader looking at this next slide, right on the right hand side, the whale in the pond. Sustainability can happen and production is sustainable. The bottom line of financing, presented by the whale, is not getting through to community scale financing, such as the such as raw Africa, represented by the pond. In fact, there are, there are um, a whole range of issues why uh, financing isn't going through to sustainable production in developed economies. But this is a presentation, obviously, about realities of um, financial flows to Africa. So the reasons the well investing in the pond is minimum scale of mainstream fund investments. Think hundreds of millions US minimum of pension funds and insurance funds. 
low or near low risk mandates. That's the new requirements to keep funds at very low risk in developed countries. And there's also issues is locked into short term economic growth. The petunias are the solutions we're working on so that the world can invest in them. We're covered in the next section on true value. Next slide, please. We need to work out how to stay from products and services and cost less than unsustainable products and services and make it happen. Please join these next few points I'm going to make. The key are retail sales rapidly expanding, go hand in hand with financial flows and minimising the business risk. Problem. Next slide, please. It's good to be bad. In the spirit of the famous folktale, The Emperor's New Clothes, the 2012 world physicist Roger Penrose's the, the Emperor's New Mind, why should economic activities, which are good for people and planet, more than activities which are not? Join the development of the now coalition, an advisor and a potential investor commented, but it's good to be bad. Okay, but if it's a look to make good environmental and social choices, deforestation free, zero carbon, organic, zero plastic, fair trade, the majority of consumers don't have a choice whether to be ethical, even in their moment. The force of most sustainable production strengthens, driven by low, driven by mainstream retail price competition and, and consumer price demand. You can't compete with products made by synthetic chemicals, made from synthetic chemicals in plastic containers sold by large corporates. Next slide, please. Carbon pricing. Pricing of resources is already here. Left hand side down. So this is um, this is just going back to um, the the point about pricing, Michael. Is another one. Great. So we've got another poll here, Sarah. So, uh... What, what would you expect to pay for 100 grams of a high-performance body moisturizer? 5 euros, 12 euros, or 20 euros? So, folks, over to you. We have a very swift audience, William and Sarah. Uh, over 50% have already voted in eight seconds. So uh, let's hope that we do slightly better <laughs> this time as a group. Okay, I'll leave the poll open just a few more seconds. Great. Good. We have three quarters of the audience have voted, and I'm now going to close the poll and share the results with you. So please, please tell us we did better this time, Sarah, uh, with 44% saying uh, 12 euros and 41%. Oh, uh, fabulous. Yes. <laughs> that's exactly how much we're going to charge, so that's a good sign. <laughs> what, 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 sorry, what was your charge rate, Sarah? 12, 12, 12 euros is ideal just as our base rate for a high performance and then product over 20 euros. Good. Great, got the screen up there. Over to you, Sarah. Right, so the next slide then on, there should be one pricing, that's fabulous. Um, so carbon ownership and pricing is already here. Left hand side is the IMF. Um, $275 dollars per ton of carbon abatement applied to OECD countries. Water and waste documenting are well documented. Top right hand corner biodiversity is available in New South Wales. Bottom map, our, my colleague Ash, Ashok Koshler has 40 years of experience, um, 20 years, two generations of data, development alternatives, teaching expectations of of teaching women to read, then training and enterprise creation, which informs our work in Africa. Next slide, please. Ashok demonstrates that creating jobs for women leads population growth and it follows resource use. Next slide, please. Okay, so the next slide. We're showing alignment, local, national, global, Sarah. 
Great, thank you. I think there was a bit of a blip in the internet coming through. The Synergy and Pure Organics Processing and Eco Community Facilities is fully aligned with United Nations needs, national plans, including carbon accounting centres. And of course, having this structure in place also facilitates the, um, the collection and robust reporting of structures on financial. Next slide, please. The project is achieving a high integrity of local data and its compatibility with global index web technologies. So mandatizing data in its smallest link form, a triplet, and linking to various existing databases including statistics, allows the data to be searched and queried to inform decision making and create smart contracts. Next slide, please. Smart leisures. Yes. So smart leisures are a robust verified, robust verified in real time way of So, so smart ledgers, our data is robust, verified and real initial stamping semantic triplets and graphs with chain Z, which are accessed by encryption code, um, shown below on the slide, encryption code or date. We're involved in following a number of data transfer, storage, chain and payment advances in ICT listed on the right hand side. Next slide, please. And this was another poll question you wanted to ask everyone. Um, on what use uh, have you found? So for what use should blockchain-based uh, technologies be used? I'll just launch that poll now. So it was a uh, distributed ledgers only cryptocurrencies, both or none. And we've had half the audience vote, Sarah, so just give it a few more seconds before I close that poll. Okay, and so three quarters of the audience have voted. Now, just shutting the poll, and I will present the results. So, uh, a quarter of the audience thinks uh, distributed ledgers, uh, and three quarters of the audience think distributed ledgers and cryptocurrencies. Interesting. We've got a lot to work for working on both because I think the speed of cryptocurrencies is going to slow our process down a lot, but that might be. Uh, a point for discussion. So next slide, please. Confidence yeah. accounting. Sustainability cannot happen without predicting the clarity's true value because five years of data for the traditional vegetarian vegan through deletes to leaders catering and children's workshops, which includes presenting information demonstrations. Side competence accounting is used to inform scenarios of the climate change related deaths in 2100. Following the global credit crunch in 2008, long finance and the global, uh, the global accountancy of the relevance of range valuation to improve risk assessment aspects such as our investment bank's risks costed and covered, or stranded assets such as carbon. We believe financial account competence accounting will, revo will evolve to be the way we account finance in the future or something very similar. Next slide, please. So, Bex, top expected top. For illustration, this is a Guardian newspaper graphic. It's an example of range value information. Expected projected UK economy growth recovery February 2020 following, following COVID-19. Bottom expected top is fundamental risk assessment values, think improving risk profiles. This is creating a future scenario assessment and keeping variation. Next slide, please. Green economic growth. Demonstration for analysing green economic growth in Burkina Faso. The blue ranges represent business as usual. The red ranges represent the scenario of national implementation of the Cirrus Shea and Shea Organics project. The projected financial results 
resource accounts are applied to 2020 GDP estimated at 2020 estimated prices. Left is in growth, right is reduction in carbon emissions per GDP. The critical step at this point we want to illustrate is that keep data variation at a local level and a scale, financial and resource fundamental so that we work towards the future. Required. Sorry, we're showing sustainability linked bonds. So, sustainability linked policy performance bonds are viable for today's markets. Bonds are green bonds. Sustainability linked bonds are uniquely tied to increased interest payments if the SP does not meet carbon emission targets or other sustainability targets, and reduced or zero interest rates if the a sustainability linked bonds is a very attractive instrument for the second round of financing for expansion of serious and clear organics that will not only generate very low interest financing for carbon engineering infrastructure, but also the working capital required for extensive relationship building. We're in the process of, of designing the serious and clear organic sustainability sustainability bond at the moment with the steps at the bottom of the slide. Next slide, please. Technologies. Capital investment in clean up processing technology doesn't require the billion scales of utility scale investment for state of the art renewable energy in developing countries, in developed countries. The serious shear technologies have been selected to provide freedom from energy costs, from external price fluctuations, optimize value chains by reusing waste organic material, such as, fuel, uh, such as organic uh, fuel. Community scale use and cost effective use cost effective and in a roller not spending more than two million on regional processing centres and ten corresponding ten corresponding collection centres. Here are the examples we've chosen for the clear organics and serious shear project. It's by power generation, power and um, applied to local the mechanic within the um, processing. Next slide. Chains have worked every step of production and retail, working towards optimizing production income at every stage. So, the Sirius Shear on the left is the collection center, Sirius Shear on the right, value chain is the regional processing centers. That slide hasn't come up with me. Okay. Okay, next slide again, please. Yep. So working value chains. Uh, slide B. Okay. Working working value chains slide B. So just stress this is probably the most important slide I'm presenting. It's a demonstration. It's the clear retail product breakdown for a hundred grams of clear product and our pricing analysis. So we, we, we've, at the moment, we've got one euro of product for African eco-communities, such as for healthcare plans and education. The bottom line is, if you look at the carbon emissions on retail products, the levy would just not cut the mustard. So if you've got such a, a carbon pricing, such as the IMF recommendation of 75, um, 75 US euros per tonne of carbon pricing, there's no significant, um, there's no significant differentiation, di differentiation in this retail pricing. We're thinking of possibly a, um, a sustainable internet e-commerce platform and customers transaction costs are absolutely paramount. So at a start, the luxury product is priced with at least three euros to reinvest in clean production. So it's clear investing three euros per product in the impact of the clean production of serious shear in our ability link bonds for production rollout is a clear in the impact investing stage combined with this three euros for um, for reinvesting in production. Next please. So business can't do it all, but 
governments can't do it all either. The side of the, the Global Green Finance Index 6, the steps towards regulations for mainstream markets, which embrace ESG sustainability. So the Cirrus and Clear Organics project look forward to further engagement in such a process so that global solutions throughout value chains maintain a balance between regulation and market forces. Next slide, please. So conclusion, financial flows are just not getting through. The project, our project, a pilot project near Warmadudu lost a significant grant of almost one million last year. We've currently made this up, probably it was short at least 0.5 million in the pipeline. This could be absorbed with large scale impact financing, such as sustainability liaisons. The message we want to send community scale um, green technology investment worldwide, fundamental, right from the start, right from day one, to start looking at collecting robust by local data. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. And a, a, a real tour de force there as you cover some very fascinating stuff. We've got eight or nine minutes uh, for questions, and so I'm just going to barrel in if I could. Uh, Bob McNowell is curious, what are your proposals for extensive regional and worldwide distribution of the products? William, perhaps. William. Um, we have been in the Shea sector for a long time, and I'm here, for example, uh, uh, discussing uh, with uh, the chocolate manufacturing industry. So we have two streams. Uh, one stream is the cosmetic industry. Uh, for the, on the cosmetic industry, we are producing cosmetic ourselves, and we are going to keep supplying the shea butter, uh, basically the companies who are using shea butter in their product uh, worldwide. So we have already uh, contacted a certain number of them, uh, getting some letter of intention. Our traditional partner that like uh, uh, Loaders and Crooklands uh, now that has been uh, bought by Bungie, uh, International Specialty Fat which is uh, part of the Mitsubishi groups and, and others. Uh, we have contacted them already. And, and uh, so in terms of the, the, the chocolate industry, uh, we also have some channels. So it, we, we have been in, in the business, uh, uh, like I said, for, for the past uh, almost 15 years. We used to export shea nuts. Uh, it's not really working for everybody, not us, not them. Uh, and now uh, I think the, the industry is ready to take a, a zero carbon, zero deforestation, grade A shea butter, and, and they, they, are, they are following us on that. Um, Shalom Lloyd, who I know is, is deep into shea butter, is curious about, are you working on initiatives targeted at waste management? Um, and uh, we also had another uh, question here from Bob McDowell on, uh, disposal of fat and other extracted elements. Uh, and uh, finally, Greg Davies, uh, curious about what opportunities could shea production offer for a more circular economy. So some comments, please, on, on, on the closing the loop of waste. Okay. Um, basically, we, we are going toward uh, some form of, of, of zero waste uh, uh, value chain. Okay. Um, I will I will give you the detail of what happened on the ground. So a women group goes and collect the fruits. They bring them to the, the facility where they're the collection center. Uh, they will extract the pulp. So they will remove the skin and, and all the I would call the, the wet the wet waste is going into a bio dish digester. Right? Uh this this biodigester produced biogas. This biogas is used for boiling the nuts rather than wood. So that's the first step. And the nuts themselves now, they are dried, also using uh, some of the energy from this gas bio, by, by a bio digester. And once they are cracked, the shell is also used now into the next process for boiling. So the shell are now are going into a syn gas generator. And this syn gas generator is going to generate another gas, which is very high, uh, in, in, in octane. Uh, so all this waste is going into energy so there i gave you 100 percent of the, the the waste usage so after that 
uh, from the biodigester, you can imagine that in the Sahel area, where the soil are very poor in carbon, right, the, the waste from the biodigester is very high grade biofertilizers. And they have a very high value. Okay. Uh, on the, on the, on the shell side, uh, from the syn gas generator, we get biochars, which also have other value into, into, into water filtering and water cleaning. Now, when we go to the next stage, which is the processing center, uh, basically the shea almonds, which is sent there, has about, uh, 50% of, uh, of, uh, of fats and the other 50% is actually, uh, waste fibers. So this is where the energy comes for the processing. So what we're doing is again, using that directly, uh, to generate power in order to, to, um, uh, to, to do the processing, to generate electricity in order to run the machines that are going to be extracting the fat and packing the fat. So we are more or less running a zero, zero waste, uh, uh, a circle. And, and, and if we have any left, then the community is happy to take it because it's organic matter, which they very much need to put by some carbons in the soil. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, comments here. Uh, Sarah, Deborah Webster is curious. Could you just explain how uh, the use of cryptocurrency slows down your blockchain? Yes, it's both the, the, um, the mining of cryptocurrency has to be distributed every day in the world. So with, with the amount of um, traffic the blockchain, it's just getting so and so. So you think of something like Bitcoin, Ethereum, far too slow to be able to be a efficient um, ledger system for something like the Serious Shear Project once we get global. Okay. Uh, Deborah also had a question for both of you. What three things or partners would be game changers for you? Um, Me? Really? Will you? Yes, really at this point, uh, we need to be able to invest into the pilot center to deploy the technology that was designed. Uh, so this would be game changing for us. Um, you know, off takers that could give us, uh, in addition to, to letter of intent, some form of payment guarantee could be also a game changer. Okay. And finally, uh, Christopher Gleedle at the time they allows a question. What feedback loops are designed into your processes to boost income, health, natural capital, and reduce impact? Uh, so sort of uh, systems thinking, really. Uh, uh, basically, we, we decided uh, not to not to do direct investments uh, into the community. So the way it works is that uh, that foundation is, is uh, basically managed by the women group themselves, and they decide on the priorities and where the investment goes, and we just support them in doing that. Okay, good. Well, um, I'd like to say thank you both very much. We've uh, come, sadly, to the end of time, uh, which is <laughs> which is the real resource in life, I, I find. Um, I just uh, wanted to do th three quick rounds of thanks, if I may. Uh, firstly, as ever, to our sponsors who allow us to range across the subject. And who would have thought that Shia Butter would get such a huge turnout uh, today? Uh, as well as uh, so many good questions and comments, although I think we failed our geography lesson, which is a bit of a shame. Um, I'd like to thank the audience, of course, for participating and uh, demonstrating your knowledge of geography. Uh, as ever, a number of events uh, coming forward, so please just uh, check online the website as ever. But we do have a, a related webinar tomorrow where we're going to be looking at Alia, which has been doing a lot of positive uh, investment in the United Kingdom. Uh, particularly around fixed income structures, so uh, a related but interesting area as we try and get some of this down. And I was certainly impressed today, uh, William and Sarah, with how much the uh, carbon pricing really needs to go up there to make any kind of a retail difference, which I, which I think is is an important point for those of us to sort of say how unimportant it is. Uh, but my real thanks is obviously to both of you, uh, Sarah, for getting up at what is frightfully early in the morning over there in Argentina and uh, and, and uh, pursuing uh, your presentation despite the internet, and William for dialing in from Moscow, and anybody who wishes uh, to get in touch with you, um, I will be sending uh, any comments or questions over to you. 
So thank you very much for appearing today. And if I may, I'm going to do what we normally do, which is open the floodgates of applause using technology uh, from a tree. Uh, so this is my Korean karmic clapper. And were the audience able to applaud, I'm sure they would. Uh, something maybe a bit louder than that. Uh, but thank you very much for appearing today. Thank you, Michael, for the opportunity. Bravo.